The Green Fairy Book by Andrew Lang Little One Eye, Little Two Eyes, and Little Three Eyes There was once a woman who had three daughters, of whom the eldest was called Little One Eye, because she had only one eye in the middle of her forehead, and the second, Little Two Eyes, because she had two eyes like other people, and the youngest, Little Three Eyes, because she had three eyes, and her third eye was also in the middle of her forehead. But because little two eyes did not look any different from other children, her sisters and mother would not bear her. They would say to her, You with your two eyes are no better than common folk. You don't belong to us. They pushed her here and threw her wretched clothes there and gave her to eat only what they had left, and they were as unkind to her as ever they could be. It happened one day that little two eyes had to go out into the fields to take care of the goat but she was still quite hungry because her sisters had given her so little to eat. So she sat down in the meadow and began to cry, and she cried so much that two little brooks ran out of her eyes. But when she looked up once in her grief, there stood a woman beside her who asked, Little Two Eyes, what are you crying for? Little Two Eyes answered, Have I not reason to cry? Because I have two eyes like other people, my sisters and my mother cannot bear me. They push me out of one corner into another, and give me nothing to eat except what they leave. Today they have given me so little that I am still quite hungry. Then the wise woman said, Little Two Eyes, draw your eyes and I will tell you something so that you need never be hungry again. Only say to your goat, Little goat, bleat, little table, appear, and a beautifully spread table will stand before you with the most delicious food on it, so that you can eat as much as you want. And when you have had enough, and don't want the little table any more, you only have to say, Little goat, bleat, little table, away, and then it will vanish. Then the wise woman went away. But little two eyes thought, I must try it once if what she has told me is true, for I am more hungry than ever. And she said, Little goat, bleat, little table, appear. And scarcely had she uttered the words, when there stood a little table before her covered with a white cloth, on which were arranged a plate, with a knife and a fork and a silver spoon, and the most beautiful dishes, which were smoking hot, as if they had just come out of the kitchen. Then Little Two Eyes said the shortest grace she knew, and went to work and made a good dinner. And when she had had enough, she said, as the wise woman had told her, Little goat, bleat, little table, away and immediately the table and all that was on it disappeared again. That is a splendid way of housekeeping, thought Little Two Eyes, and she was quite happy and contented. In the evening, when she went home with her goat, she found a little earthenware dish with the food that her sisters had thrown to her, but she did not touch it. The next day she went out again with her goat, and left the few scraps which were given to her. The first and second times her sisters did not notice this, but when it happened continually they remarked it and said, Something is the matter with little two eyes, for she always leaves her food now, and she used to gobble up all that was given her. She must have found another means of getting food. So in order to get at the truth, little one eye was told to go out with little two eyes when she drove the goat to pasture, and to notice particularly what she got there and whether anyone brought her food and drink. Now when Little Two Eyes was setting out, Little One Eye came up to her and said, I will go into the field with you and see if you take good care of the goat and if you drive him properly to get grass. But Little Two Eyes saw what Little One Eye had in her mind, and she drove the goat into the long grass and said, Come, Little One Eye, we will sit down here and I will sing you something. Little One Eye sat down, and as she was very much tired by the long walk to which she was not used to, and by the hot day, and as Little Two Eyes went on singing, Little One Eye, are you awake? Little One Eye, are you asleep? She shut her one eye and fell asleep. When Little Two Eyes saw that Little One Eye was asleep and could find out nothing, she said, Little Goat, bleat, Little Table, appear, and sat down at her table and ate and drank as much as she wanted. Then she said again, Little Goat, bleat, Little Table, away and in the twinkling of an eye all had vanished. Little Two Eyes then woke Little One Eye and said, Little One Eye, you meant to watch, and instead you went to sleep. 
In the meantime, the goat might have gone far and wide. Come, we will go home. So they went home, and little two eyes again left her little dish untouched, and little one eye could not tell her mother why she would not eat, and said as an excuse, I was so sleepy out of doors. The next day, the mother said to little three eyes, This time you shall go with little two eyes, and watch whether she eats anything out in the field, and whether anyone brings her food and drink, for eat and drink she must secretly. So little three eyes went to little two eyes and said, I will go with you and see if you take good care of the goat, and if you drive him properly to get grass. But little two eyes knew what little three eyes had in her mind, and she drove the goat out into the long grass and said, We will sit down here, little three eyes, and I will sing you something. Little Three Eyes sat down. She was tied by the walk and the hot day, and Little Two Eyes sang the same little song again. Little Three Eyes, are you awake? But instead of singing as she ought to have done, Little Three Eyes, are you asleep? She sang without thinking, Little Two Eyes, are you asleep? She went on singing, Little Three Eyes, are you awake? Little Two Eyes, are you asleep? So that the two eyes of Little Three Eyes fell asleep, but the third, which wasn't spoken to in the little rhyme, did not fall asleep. Of course, Little Three Eyes shut that eye also out of cunning, to look as if she were asleep, but it was blinking and could see everything quite well. And when Little Two Eyes thought that Little Three Eyes was sound asleep, she said her rhyme, Little goat, bleat, little table, appear, and ate and drank to her heart's content, and then made the table go away again by saying, Little goat, bleat, Little table, away! But Little Three Eyes had seen everything. Then Little Two Eyes came to her and woke her and said, Well, Little Three Eyes, have you been asleep? You watch well. Come, we will go home. When they reached home, Little Two Eyes did not eat again, and Little Three Eyes said to the mother, I know now why that proud thing eats nothing. When she said to the goat in the field, Little goat, bleat, little table, appear, a table stands before her spread with the best food, much better than we have, and when she has had enough, she says, Little goat, bleat, little table, away, and everything disappears again. I saw it all exactly. She made two of my eyes go to sleep with a little rhyme, but the one in my forehead remained awake, luckily. Then the envious mother cried out, Will you fare better than we do? You shall not have the chances to do so again, and she fetched a knife and killed the goat. When Little Two Eyes saw this, she went out full of grief, and sat down in the meadow and wept bitter tears. Then again the wise woman stood before her and said, Little Two Eyes, what are you crying for? Have I not reason to cry? she answered. The goat, which when I said the little rhyme spread the table so beautifully, my mother has killed, and now I must suffer hunger and want again. The wise woman said, Little Two Eyes, I will give you a good piece of advice. Ask your sisters to give you the heart of the dead goat, and bury it in the earth before the house door. That will bring you good luck. Then she disappeared, and Little Two Eyes went home, and said to her sisters, Dear sisters, do you give me something of my goat. I ask nothing better than its heart. Then they laughed and said, You can have that if you want nothing more. And Little Two Eyes took the heart and buried it in the evening when all was quiet as the wise woman had told her, before the house door. The next morning, when they all awoke and came to the house door, there stood a most wonderful tree, which had leaves of silver and fruit of gold growing on it. You never saw anything more lovely and gorgeous in your life. But they did not know how the tree had grown up in the night. Only little two eyes knew that it had sprung from the heart of the goat, for it was standing just where she had buried it in the ground. Then the mother said to little one eye, Climb up, my child, and break us off the fruit from the tree. Little One-Eye climbed up, but just when she was going to take hold of one of the golden apples, the bough sprang out of her hands. And this happened every time, so that she could not break off a single apple, however hard she tried. Then the mother said, Little Three-Eyes, do you climb up? You with your three eyes can see round better than Little One-Eye. So Little One-Eye slid down, and Little Three-Eyes climbed up, but she was not any more successful. Look round as she might, the golden apples bent themselves back. At last the mother got impatient and climbed up herself, but she was even less successful than Little One-Eye and Little Three-Eyes 
in catching hold of the fruit, and only grasped at the empty air. Then little two I said, I will try once. Perhaps I shall succeed better. The sisters called out, You with your two eyes will no doubt succeed. But little two eyes climbed up, and the golden apples did not jump away from her, but behaved quite properly, so that she could pluck them off, one after the other, and brought a whole apronful down with her. The mother took them from her, and instead of behaving better to poor little two eyes, as they ought to have done, they were jealous that only she could reach the fruit and behaved still more unkindly to her. It happened one day that when they were all standing together by the tree that a young knight came riding along. Be quick, little two eyes, cried the two sisters. Creep under this, so that you shall not disgrace us. And they put over poor little two eyes as quickly as possible an empty cask, which was standing close to the tree, and they pushed the golden apples which she had broken off under her feet. When the knight, who was a very handsome young man, rode up, he wondered to see the marvelous tree of gold and silver, and said to the two sisters, Whose is this beautiful tree? Whoever will give me a twig of it shall have whatever she wants. Then little one eye and little three eyes answered that the tree belonged to them, and that they would certainly break him off a twig. They gave themselves a great deal of trouble, but in vain. The twig and fruit bent back every time from their hands. Then the knight said, It is very strange that the tree should belong to you, and yet that you have not the power to break anything from it. But they would have that the tree was theirs, and while they were saying this, little two eyes rolled a couple of golden apples from under the cask, so that they lay at the knight's feet, for she was angry with little one eye and little three eyes for not speaking the truth. When the knight saw the apples, he was astonished, and asked where they came from. Little one eye and little three eyes, answered that they had another sister, but she could not be seen because she had only two eyes, like ordinary people. But the knight demanded to see her, and called out, Little two eyes, come forth. Then little two eyes came out from under the cask quite happily, and the knight was astonished at her great beauty, and said, Little two eyes, I am sure you can break off a twig from the tree. Yes, answered little two eyes, I can, for the tree is mine. So she climbed up and broke off a small branch with its silver leaves and golden fruit without any trouble and gave it to the knight. And then he said, Little Two Eyes, what shall I give you for this? Ah, answered Little Two Eyes, I suffer hunger and thirst, want and sorrow from early morning till late in the evening. If you would take me with you and free me from this, I should be happy. Then the knight lifted Little Two Eyes on his horse and took her home to his father's castle. There he gave her beautiful clothes, and food and drink, and because he loved her so much, he married her, and the wedding was celebrated with great joy. When the handsome knight carried little two eyes away with him, the two sisters envied her good luck at first. But the wonderful tree is still with us, after all, they thought, and although we cannot break any fruit from it, everyone will stop and look at it, and will come to us and praise it. Who knows whether we may not reap a harvest from it? But the next morning the tree had flown, and their hopes with it, and when little two eyes looked out of her window, there it stood underneath, to her great delight. Little two eyes lived happily for a long time. Once two poor women came to the castle to beg alms. Then little two eyes looked at them and recognized both her sisters, little one eye and little three eyes, who had become so poor that they came to beg bread at her door. But little two eyes bade them welcome and was so good to them that they both repented from their hearts of having been so unkind to their sister. Grim. End of Little One Eye, Little Two Eyes, and Little Three Eyes. Recording by Michael Dang, Diamond Bar.